good day, sophomores. Welcome to another week of new lessons for our subject, Gen 006 Ethics. Now, we are going to discuss Module 9 and Module 10, okay, entitled Stages of Moral Development, Reflections on Chismes and Bullying, as well as the topic on the difference between human acts and acts of humans. So, first off, we will tackle Module 9, which is again entitled Stages of Moral Development, Reflections on Chismes and Bullying. Okay, so before we go to the main topic and before we discuss the main lesson, okay, so let's have the lesson objective. So at the end of the lesson, you will be able to understand the stages of moral development and identify the things being done to you in every stage of development. And you should also be able to, at the end of the lesson, be able to explain how chismes and bullying affect your character. Okay, so first and foremost, let's talk about uh, stages of uh, moral development we're in uh, mostly I think you have already heard this when you were still in senior high school okay but when we talk about or when during your first year and senior high school okay so when we talk about stages of moral development the first and foremost person the proponent that we always think about would be Lawrence Colbert okay but uh, now, okay, Colbert was not exactly the first proponent of the moral development theory. Okay, he was actually, okay, oh, by the way, this is, yeah, that's Lawrence Colbert. And he is, yes, an American psychologist and educator no, known for his theory of moral development. Okay, so he was very, very popular when it comes to that. Okay, now, uh, just like what I've told you a while ago, okay, he's not exactly the main thinker behind uh, moral development because most of his um, uh, uh, his his theory okay was based in his uh, interest in the works of Jean Piaget okay in the uh, moral development of children okay so uh, based on Jean Piaget's um, uh, works in children's moral development okay according to John Piaget okay children naturally progress from a form of moral reasoning based on the consequences of an act so by the way that's John Piaget okay so that's the idol of Lawrence Kahlberg so the works of um, John Piaget when it comes to moral development of children that's where Lawrence Kahlberg based his understanding in order for him to develop the theory on moral development okay so again based on Piaget okay children naturally progress from a form of moral reasoning based on the consequences of an act so let's say for example if if a child is being punished okay so uh to one that takes the actor's intentions into account okay so what did Kahlberg do okay or uh, what Kahlberg did as a, uh, as his experiment okay he interviewed seven, 72 lower and middle class white boys okay presenting a, each with a moral dilemma okay so ang ginawa ni uh, uh, para para makagawa si Kohlberg ng kanyang theory on moral development okay so he interviewed 72 lower and middle class white boys presenting them with a moral dilemma. Now, ano yung moral dilemma na present ni Colbert, okay? Whether it would be permissible for a poor man to steal medicine for he, his dying wife. So, that's the that's the um, moral dilemma that uh, Lawrence Colbert uh, gave, gave to those boys, okay? So, those uh, kids, all right? Now, the children's responses became the basis of his six-stage theory of moral development. Okay, so based dun sa sagot ng mga bata, dun sa kanyang moral, present the moral dilemma. Okay, so he was able to um, formulate the theory on moral development. Okay, so, now the stages of moral development, okay, ha, uh, has been presented in... Yeah, in this kind of uh, uh, 
chart okay so this is actually the different stages and the different levels in in the moral development so uh, Kohlberg was identified was able to identify three levels of moral reasoning so we have the pre-conventional we have the conventional and post conventional okay so each level is associated with increasingly complex stages of moral development so if you could actually see it here all right if you can actually see it here in the diagram okay you will see uh, very very anotoe eh, very very symbolic okay so as you go higher the stages mas mas ano eh mas nagiging uh, mataas yung ladder mas mas nagiging malaki yung kanyang bar so it means it's becoming more complex as you go higher into the stages and as you go up uh, higher into the levels okay so that's how uh, Kohlberg presented his theory on moral development. Now, we are going to uh, delve into further each and every stage that uh, Lawrence Kohlberg presented. So, uh, for our first level, so we have here the level one pre-conventional level. Okay, so under the pre-conventional level, we have two stages. So, uh, stage one and stage two okay so first and foremost stage one is um, uh, deemed as the obedience and punishment orientation now throughout the pre-conventional level a child's sense of morality is uh, externally controlled ibig sabihin yung mga <clears throat> yung mga ginagawa niya yung, yung sense of morality niya nakabase yan sa kung paano siya mag mag uh, respond sa mga nakapaligid sa kanya. Okay? So, children accept and believe the rules of authority figures such as parents and teachers. Kaya nga kapag bata, okay, pag ang bata nasa stage 1 ng moral development, okay, pansin mo, parang ang mga bata talagang sumusunod sa kanila mga parents or sumusunod sa kanila mga teachers because they are afraid of punishment, especially for stage 1. Okay? So, a child with pre-conventional morality has not yet adapted, adopted, or internalized society's conventions regarding what is right or what is wrong. Basta ang alam lang ng mga bata, kapag ka, uh, pag ka, if, they were, if they are being punished, then definitely uh, what they did was wrong. Okay? So, they will do all that it takes for, for them uh, to do good in order for them not to be punished. Okay? So, they, they you know, they, they focus largely on external consequences that certain actions may bring. So, stage one, for example, an action is perceived as morally wrong, okay? Yeah, focuses on the child's desire to obey rules and avoid being punished. So, example, an action is perceived as morally morally wrong because the perpetrator is punished. So, kapag nakita ng bata na may pinarusahan, Okay, let's say for example, pinalo. Okay, nakita niya pinalo yung kaklase niya. So, ibig sabihin, ang iisipin ng bata na nasa stage 1 ng moral development. Okay, yung bata may ginawang hindi maganda. Alright, so yan ang concept nila ng right or wrong. Okay, so kapag pina pag pinalo, okay, or binigyan ng punishment, pinatayo sa, pinatayo sa corner, ibig sabihin, may nagawang mali. So, ang gagawin ni bata, okay, ang gagawin ng bata, hindi, uh, i i, -i ipapasok ka sa mind niya na ah, pag ginawa niya yun, mag, mag, ma, ma, mapaparusahan siya. So, hindi ko gagawin yung gagawin niya kasi mapaparusahan ako kapag ginawa ko yun. Okay? So, that's the concept of the kids when it comes to um, when it comes to what is right and what is wrong. Okay? External lang kanilang source of understanding ng right or wrong. Kasi wala pa silang sariling concept of right or wrong. Kasi parang hindi pa nila masyadong na-internalize yung morality of right and wrong. Okay, now for stage two, okay, it's still this is under uh, level one, pre-conventional level, okay? So in stage two, which we call instrumental orientation, ano ibig sabihin nito guys? Based on the uh, keyword there, aiming at a reward, okay? So in stage two, okay, it shows a limited interest in the needs of others. So, parang kanya-kanya ito. Okay? And uh, only to the point where it might further the individual's own interest. Okay? Saka lang sila nagkakaroon ng pakialam sa ibang tao if it, uh, if, if it affects them as well. 
Okay? So as a result, concern for others is not based on loyalty or intrinsic respect, but rather a, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, okay? Pag ginawan mo ako ng maganda, gawan din kita ng maganda. Okay? Alright? So an example would be when a child is asked by his parents to do a chore. The child asks, what's in it for me? Okay? So the, the, the sad thing here is that children who are in this stage tend to be stopped on the stage. Why? Kasi sakalang sila, okay, sakalang sila gagawa ng isang bagay kapag meron silang reward. Okay? And that's a sad thing, okay? Because sometimes, children doesn't get past this stage. Okay? They, they don't get past this stage basing, based na rin sa pagpapalaki ng magulang. Let's say, saka siya titigil para na, na umiyak, para bigyan mo ng ano, para pagbibigyan mo siya ng, ng food or ng, ng Price, okay, which is wrong. Okay, so it's, it's supposed to be only in a certain age. It's, you know, stage two is supposed to be only in a certain age. Hindi yan pang forever. Okay, so uh, and the parents offer the child an incentive by giving him an allowance. So you see, if the parents would like or what would want to elicit a good behavior from their kids in in stage two, they would have to give rewards. And sometimes the sad thing here is that. Um, hindi na nakakaalis sa stage na yan yung batang yan. So, parang feeling niya ganyan na forever. Alright? Now, the two initial stages of morality are called pre-conventional because there is no code of conduct in them. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, okay, wala, pa silang, uh, wala pa silang concept of, wala pa silang concrete concept of morality. Actions are seen as isolated events and the wider context is hardly seen. Kung ano ang nakikita lang nila, dun lang sila magbibase. Okay? Hindi pa nila alam i-internalize yung 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 morality of a certain act, the goodness or 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 the badness, the wrongness or the goodness of a certain action. Okay? Wala pa silang concept nito. Okay? Basta pagka stage 1, pinaros nakita nilang pinarosahan sila, ibig sabihin or pinarosahan sila, ibig sabihin may nagawa silang maganda. Hindi maganda. So kapa for them to not experience the same punishment anymore, they, they will try their best not to do that action anymore. Now, for stage two, okay, it's not more on pleasing and following the orders of, uh, of the elders or the teachers, but more on, I will follow your, your rules, okay, if there is something in it for me, okay, if I will gain something from it, okay, so that's, that's stage two, all right? But yes, these two are under the pre-conventional level because there's still the kids or the, the, the children in these stages doesn't have yet the concept of the, the, the concrete concept of morality. Okay, now for stage three and four, which is under level two, which is the conventional level. Okay, so throughout the conventional level, the child's sense of morality is tied to personal and societal relationships okay so this is the time now so if you can see it here mapapansin niyo guys ang bata tumatanda na ito now ang, ang mga stage 3 usually mga grade school yan okay uh, stage 3 and stage 4 mga grade school yan going to higher higher levels in grade school and you will notice diba nung elementary tayo okay nung elementary tayo we are very very keen on making friends Okay? Kasi hindi na lang sa family ang ating mga relationships. You start going to school na eh. So you are going to build relationships with other people. Okay? So children continue to accept the rules of authority figures but this is now due to their belief okay, that this is necessary to ensure positive relationships and societal order. Kaya kapag grade school tayo, napakasipag natin because we wanted to impress other people. Tama? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have that kind of mentality when we were in we, we were, when we were in elementary. Uh, kung, kung pag, paglilinisan tayo ng classroom, pag, pag-gardenin tayo sa labas, we, we follow. Okay? We are afraid na Ma, ma, maging hindi maganda ang impression nila sa atin. So, we, we work to impress other people. Because if you impress other people, you will be able to create good relationships with them. Okay? That's the, the, that's the mentality that we have before. Okay? So, adherence to rules and conventions is somewhat rigid during these stages. And 
and a rules appropriateness of fairness is seldom questioned. Now, in stage three, okay, this is the good boy, nice girl orientation. So, children want the approval of others and act in ways to avoid disapproval. Sa ito nga, nanghihingi sila ng approval. They wanted to impress the elders. They're, they wanted to impress their teachers. Kasi kapag ka na-impress sila, they will be able to build good relationships. Okay, so, stage three, the emphasis in, is placed on good behavior and people being nice to others because they wanted to build good relationships. Now, in stage four, okay, the practice of respect for and obedience to the elder or the leader, the boss, the teacher, as well as due regulations plays a key role. Okay? So, yung stage three, being nice to their peers. Yung stage four, being nice because they wanted to uh, respect and obey their teachers, their boss, their, their, their leader, okay? And as well as the rules and regulations. All in all, the stage three and itong si stage four. Alright? Okay, stage four is loyalty to law and order. So, maintaining the social order orientation. You follow the rules, okay? You follow the rules and regulations are to be followed and obeyed, okay? Are the, you know, social laws and social order reign supreme, okay? It's absolute para sa mga, bata, sa, para sa mga tao na dito sa stage nito, okay? So, stages three and four are called conventional because in them, the individual is sincerely loyal to the collective rules and norms. Okay? So, itong, itong part na ito, itong stage 3 and si stage 4, they are called conventional. Okay? Because most of the kids in these stages are, are all about rules. Okay? Rules when it comes to making friends. Okay? Pag uh, ganito ang ruling natin, pag sa mga making friends, ganito ang rule natin sa loob ng classroom, okay? Kasi sinabi ni teacher, okay? Alright? Lahat, uh, lahat ng rules and regulations sa loob ng classroom, it's gonna be the supreme, the supreme law, okay? Sa loob ng classroom. Kaya kailangan dapat lahat sum sumunod. Okay? So that's for level 2, conventional level. Now for level 3, okay, which is the post- conventional level. Ito na, makikita mo talaga dito. Sabi ko nga, as you go higher the stages and as you go higher the levels of stages of moral development, okay, mas nagiging komplikado at mas nagiging complex ang mga um, uh, mga bagay na kailangan nilang pagtunan ng pansin. Okay? So, throughout the post-conventional level, a person's sense of morality is defined in terms of more abstract principles and values. Okay, so people now believe that some laws are unjust and should be changed or eliminated. Okay, so he, parang kung dati yung, yung previous stage wherein basta kung ano yung naiset na rule sa isang society, yun ay absolute kailangan sundin. In stage 5, okay, which is, which is what we call social contract orientation, meaning to say there are already some parts of the rules na iniisip ng, ng taong yan na parang hindi ata akma itong itong, uh, itong rule na ito. Okay? Parang hindi ata akma ang rule na ito sa, sa, sa ganitong klase ng sitwasyon. Okay? Alright? So, in this stage, the world is viewed as holding different opinions, rights, and values. Such perspectives should be mutually respected as unique to each person or community. Okay? So, parang instead of the stage 4 being wherein the, the, the rules and regulations are the, the law of the land, ibig sabihin, lahat ng tao dapat susundin yun. In stage 5, the, the person now is able to discern that not all rules are applicable to all people. Okay? Meron mga exceptions to the rule. Baga. And there are those with different perspectives and, and different values and different opinions and, and the person under the stage 5 knows how to respect okay uh, as you know to each person because it's unique to the all right and of course uh, when it comes to stage 5 the individual uh, realizes that the laws and outcomes are sometimes unfair Okay? So, hindi ibig sabihin na rule daw siya para, para sa isang tao na nasa stage 5 ng moral development. Hindi ibig sabihin, naiisip na niya na hindi ibig sabihin na 
rule yan at uh, rules and regulations yan ng isang society, it, eh, it's an absolute truth na. Okay? Alright? So, it, if necessary, he tries to improve them. He does, he does that through legitimate means in democratic, morally acceptable, ethically responsible way. So, kung halimbawa, na, na, nakita niya na, na uh, parang hindi magandang rule na ito, hindi magandang regulation na ito, okay? He will do whatever it takes to, to, uh, to rectify the, the, that, that particular rule or regulation. Pero in a way na, ethical, okay, responsible, morally acceptable, okay? But for stage 6, okay, but for stage 6 which is what we call your universal ethical principle orientation, okay? This is largely governed by lasting feelings of goodwill, compassion, and solidarity for all beings. Parang ito yung ito yung stage na kung saan, okay? Um that the moral reasoning is based on abstract reasoning using universal ethical principles. Uh, you're not just talking about the rules of the society, but the rules of the universe. Of, of the universe, the, the ethical uh, rules and regulations of the universe. What 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 good does uh, what kind of good uh, is applicable to everybody? Okay, so in, in stage six, okay, the individual or the community tries to live according to the principles of universal ethics. So, hindi lang yung tipong kung ano ang nakakabuti para sa community nila, pero yung nakakabuti para sa humankind. Okay, it's it's not just about um, uh, trying to uh, make rules or trying to make regulations in a certain community or certain society that is only applicable for those people who belong into that particular society but it's more on it's it's more on what's going to be a common good for all the people in the universe okay so so in in stage 6 dito po papasok yung mga tao kagaya nila kagaya nila Buddha si Darth Gautama right mga na, na pag-aralan natin with um, Buddhism okay Hinduism in Islam okay yung mga yung mga prophets yung, yung mga Hindus okay uh, um, Muhammad Allah okay the, those people, uh, yung mga nag, yung mga lalo na si, si Darth Gautama, okay? Those people are, are are have reached stage six, wherein they are trying not to, okay? They are trying to uh, think of ways in order for all the people in the universe to become good, okay? Not just for their own selves, not just for their own family, their own community, their own society, but for all people, okay? So it's it's um, it's uh, the, the the process of planetary brotherhood is experienced as a central fact okay so now the children and adults respect law and codes of conduct yet at the same time they see beyond them and aim at improving them stages five and six are called post-conventional because they go beyond appearances ito na talaga yung tipong they have totally mastered the concept of morality na they are devising ways in order for that concept of morality to be applied to all people hindi 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 basta basta uh, just for the sake of appearances no we think of the we think of the common good because it's the right thing to do because we already have a, a concrete concept of morality that's why we know that this act, regardless of race, regardless of the kind of society, regardless, regardless of the kind of community they belong to, if, if you do this kind of act and it, it turns out to be a wrong act, okay, mali talaga, okay? Hindi dahil uh, nasa iba silang society, so that they, they have different views as well. But when it comes to stage six, now in level three, post conventional, okay, it's it's the 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 the, uh, the rules, the regulations apply to everybody. They they follow the rules, but at the same time, they know the morality behind it. Okay? If they think that there is no moral act behind such rules and regulations, then they try their best to rectify it. Palitan natin yan. Hindi pwedeng ang isang rule, okay, ay, ay, ay applicable lang para sa mga certain kinds of people. No. Our, our rules and regulations must be under the influence of moral acts, okay, para applicable siya sa lahat ng tao. Okay? Alright? 
So, yeah, the, the, the question institutionalized injustice and aim at the inner improvement of both individual and society. Okay, so those are the different stages of moral development. Now, if you can, if you, if you notice, okay, as you go higher, the different stages of moral development, yun na yung, makikita mo din yung tumatanda na yung, yung, yung tao. Okay? So, yung mga stage 1, stage 2, mga bago, mag, bago pa mag-aaral, yung mga, yung mga hindi pa nag-aaral, stage 3 and 4, mga grade school, high school, and then stage 5 and 6, at all. Okay? Alright. So, let's go to our next topic. Okay? Chismis. Okay? Which is very much what? <laughs> Particular with, you know, <laughs> si Marites, saka si Mildred. Yan, baka mahilig sa chismis. Okay? So, when it comes to chismis, okay, let's have an etym etymology of uh, etymology of for this, okay? So, chismis actually came from the Spanish word chisme, okay? Which is the translate, which is translated to the English word gossip, okay? So, chisme, alright? Now, hindi naman natin sinasabi, okay, na, na, you know, yung chismis ay nanggaling sa mga Spaniards, okay? We, Ang nangyari kasi dito guys, meron lang tayo, nag, nagkaroon lang tayo ng ibang connotation when it comes to this one. Okay? So, hindi ibig sabihin na nanggaling sa mga Spaniards yung cheese, yung, yung cheese miss. Okay? So, uh, wala kasi tayong parang sariling term to, to, to refer to to chismis, quote and quote, okay, and uh, it's 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 best exemplified, okay, by saying kapag kahalibawa alam mong chismis na ito kapag ka ang intro sa yon ng friend mo ay huwag may kwento ko sa yon, <laughs> okay, huwag may kwento ko sa yon or huwag kwento tayo, okay, so pag sinabi mo kasi kwento, okay, again kwento came from the Spanish word kwento, okay, with a C, okay, and U, okay, instead of W. It is a story with a re related meaning of con rec recounting events. Kwento. So, pagka kasi, ang sinabi natin, we may kwento ko sa'yo. Ang onang connotation kaagad natin is like, may chismis. Pero hindi naman talaga dapat ganun. Okay? So, it, uh, kwento is not used to mean gossiping in Spanish, but in the Philippines, which is sad to say, we do open the possibilities to gossip when we invite people to kwentuhan. So, kapag ka sinabi mo, uy, may kwento ko sa'yo, ang connotation na kaagad natin, meron isa chismis yung tao sa'yo. Pero, kung titingnan mo yung etymology, yung pinanggalingan ng mga words na ginamit natin, dun sa sentence natin na yun, okay? Ma eh, hindi naman talaga actually gossip ang ibig sabihin ng kwento. At hindi naman, uh, hindi naman uh, ang, ang, ang chisme naman talaga, or gossip, hindi related sa salitang kwento in Spanish. Kasi pag sinabi mong kwento sa Spanish, you are recounting events. Ibig sabihin, these are these are events that really happen. You're just recounting it and you are just saying, you're just telling a cuento. Okay? Pero kasi ang connotation natin dito sa Philippines kapag sinabi mo, "Hoy, may kwento ko sa iyo." Parang ganoon na ganoon ka agad eh. Parang, "Hoy, may kwento ko sa iyo." Pag, eh. pag ganoon na kaagad ang entrance, ang entry spiel, okay, ng isang tao sa isang sa isang kasakanyang friend, for example. Okay? Kapag gano'n niya ang kanyang entry, entry spiel, okay? Alam na kaagad nung, nung taong pagsasabihan niya na chismis ang sasabihin niya, okay? Kasi nga, because of the lack of term that we could use to, to the word gossip, okay? We tend to uh, have a different connotation with the Spaniard, the, the, the Spanish term. Where in fact, hindi naman ang galing sa kanila yung, 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 yung understanding natin na ang chismis ay gossip. Okay? So, that's, that's really sad. Okay? Now, yeah, intriga. Okay? Intriga is also another uh, Spanish word which refers to a more specific form of gossip. Okay? One, is, one that is intended to destroy a person's reputation or to break up friendship. Ito naman talaga yung tipong uh, may malice. Okay? May malisya. Alright? Kapag ginawang ka ng intriga, ibig sabihin, it is meant for your reputation to be destroyed. Okay? Yung may intent talaga na masaktan ka. Alright? 
So that's different again from chisme and that's different again from kwento. Pero in in our in our mentality, chismes and intriga are the same. Okay? So kapag ka sinasabi natin parang yung mga words nang galing sa Spain, so parang sinasabi natin nang galing sa mga Spaniard yung pagiging chismos at pagiging intriguer at intriguer natin. Where in fact, we only had a different the uh, understanding kasi wala tayong sariling word to refer to gossip. That's why we created our own. <laughs> okay? We created our own based on what is the available language during that time. Okay? Eh, syempre, ang haba ng, ang haba ng uh, occupancy ng mga Spaniards dito sa atin. 300 plus years. Okay? So, we are bound to acquire the kind of language that they have and sometimes adding our own flair to what we have learned. Okay? Now, when it comes to uh, uh, okay, in, in the in, in bullying, okay, that's that's cheese maze, okay? Now, sometimes kasi sa cheese maze, baka siya related to bullying kasi sometimes ang, may, may, may titawag kasi tayong verbal bullying. Now, sometimes the, the verbal bullying consists yeah, colloquially cheese maze, okay? Yeah, understanding natin, okay? Now, bullying is the use of force, coercion, or threat to abuse, aggressively dominate, or intimidate, okay? And, um, ano ba kasi ang, ang reason at ano ba kasi ang, ang kinakailangang ingredient, quote and quote, para ang, ang, ang bullying ay mangyari, okay? So, one essential prerequisite is the perception by the bully, okay, or the others, of an imbalance of physical or social power. If they feel being threatened, if they feel that they are being overpowered, there is a a drive to overpower them. Okay? And sometimes, by hindi, hindi maganda yung, yung pag-overpower sa iba. Alright? And this is a subcategory of aggressive behavior characterized by the following three minimum criteria. So, may criteria tayo para masabing bullying yan. There is hostile intent, there is imbalance of power, ito yun, yung imbalance of power, wherein you feel inferior, that's why you want to overpower the other person, that's why you bully that person, okay? And there's also repetition over a period of time. So, those are the three um, criteria in order for it to be classified as bullying, okay? Merong hostile intent. Ibig sabihin, may intent para masaktan ka, okay? And there is imbalance of power because the bully wanted to overpower the, 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 the one being bullied, okay? And there is a repetition over a period of time. Now, when it comes to uh, bullying, of course, there is going to be effects not just to the one being bullied, but also to the bully as well. Okay? So, one is that for the bullied, okay, it will, or the, the, the bullied will experience depression and anxiety. Okay? And constant feeling of sadness and loneliness. Okay? And sometimes, may changes in sleep pattern and eating patterns, loss of interest and activities they used to enjoy, and these issues may persist into adulthood kapag hindi nagawa ng paraan. Okay? Another effect would be health complaints. Sometimes, they experience um, health issues na kapag ka pinadoktor naman nila, okay, wala namang makita si doctor, pero it's more on psychological and mental complaints. Okay? So, that's why we are very, very keen in maintaining the mental health of our students. Okay? So, that's why we always ask you this question. Kamusta na kayo mga anak? How is everyone? That's why we always ask you that question. Okay? Because you might look okay physically, but we cannot see your psychological and emotional and mental well-being. So, we have to ask. Alright? And there is an decreased academic achievement in school at participation. Ayaw nang pumasok. Okay? Ayaw nang mag-attend sa classes. Kasi pag nag-attend siya, nandyan yung bully. So, hindi na lang siya papasok. Okay? And that's why there is a decline in the academic performance. Okay? Now, for the effects on on the bully, okay? So, it's not just the, it's not just the, 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 the person being bullied that has effects, okay? But there is also an effect to the one that is doing the bullying, 
all right so the bully tends to abuse alcohol and other drugs in adolescence and as adults okay because they wanted to to overpower it they wanted to overpower that person so in order for them to maintain that that persona okay sometimes they they abuse alcohol kasi pag uminom sila ng alcohol they, they they gain confidence and drugs as well okay so they abuse that kasi pag hindi kapag hindi sila naka pag hindi pag hindi nila na maintain yung kanilang persona na, na, na nila yan okay they will they will be the ones being overpowered which is ayaw nila yan yung mga bully ayaw nila lang yan ayaw nila na na, na overpower sila sila nang bubuli sila kasi they want they don't want to be overpowered because in the first place the bullies okay have the intention to overpower someone okay So in order for them to maintain that persona that they have, sometimes they abuse alcohol and other drugs. Okay? What else? They always get into fights, which is usual. They vandalize property and drop out of school. Same with those who are being bullied. Nag nag drop out of school yung mga nabubuli kasi ayaw nila mabasok, ayaw nila makita yung mga klase nila. Yung mga bully nag drop out of school, okay? Because they cannot focus on academic work, okay? Because they have an image to maintain. All right, and they engage in early sexual activity, and they have criminal convictions and traffic citations as adults, and they have the tendency to be abusive towards their romantic partners, spouses, or children as adults. Okay, now uh, in the in the Philippines, okay, a very what's the most common type of um, bullying that happens? here in the Philippines. So in the Philippines, in the latest national data, this is according to UNICEF Philippines, okay? Cyber violence, okay? Or cyber bullying affects almost half of children, okay? Uh, aged um, 13 to 17. Okay, that's 13 to 17, sorry. Okay, the prevalence of cyber violence for males, which is 40%, and it's almost the same for females, which is um, uh, which is 43%. Okay? So, uh, this says something. Okay, this is saying something when it comes to bullying. Hindi, hindi na namimili ng ng gender ang pagbubuli ngayon. Everybody has a, you know, everybody can be bullied, okay? And it's not just, actually nga, itong age ng 13 to 17, hindi na yan. Parang sometimes there are people, even adults, who are being bullied, okay? So, it, it says something on the kind of society that we have, okay? So, ang hirap kasing i-pinpoint, what's the, what's really the cause of the bullying eh? So, it's, 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 kaya nga mayroon tayong mga laws that governs, you know, uh, uh, that governs bullying. We have laws and bullying. And um, in this case, again, we have to help with the authorities to enforce such bullying act. Okay? Ang, ang hirap lang kasi that as time goes by, okay, tumataas din ang cases ng bullying. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, even if we don't, even if we have a law that governs bullying okay why is it that the cases are still rising that's because it's it's the the enforcement on our part that is lacking okay may law tayo pero are, are we are we enforcing that the uh, law into our own society and into our own institution of course yes for finma yupang college ordinata we are actually enforcing that Okay, but but how about for other places? Okay, but how about for other organizations, other institutions, other societies, other communities? Are they really enforcing that law? Okay, because based on the stati- statistics that we have, uh, increasing a rate of uh, bullying cases. All right. So uh, I know some of us have experienced bullying as well. Me as well. Okay, I think uh, hindi rin ako nakaligtas sa ganyang klase ng scenario. Okay, but I hope we will be the ones to be the advocate of anti-bullying. Okay, kasi tayo mga nabully, we know how it feels to be bullied. 
that's why we don't want that to happen to other people that's why we have to be you know we have to be uh, the advocates of anti-bullying all right okay so i think that uh, ends my discussion on module 9 so please stay tuned on my discussion for module 10 and that is uh, human acts the difference between human acts and acts of man so thank you very much for watching module 9 please proceed to uh, the video discussion on module 10 maraming salamat mga anak